Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of Trend Cinema 101. Before we start, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Anne, I'm a trans guy and a filmmaker, and I have just a bit of an obsession with films, especially queer films. When I was in university, I took every opportunity I had to write my essays about queer cinema, which my teachers were not always happy about. But there was always so much more to say and to learn when it comes to queer cinematic representations and the workings of the queer filmmaking industry. The first thing you need to know is when it comes to queer cinema and even more so trans cinema, I'd say, is that most of the times we have been depicted on the screen haven't been done in the most respectful and authentic way. Trans people have predominantly been the butt of the joke, the villain of the story, deceivers, or just straight up sensational freaks. There is a lot to say and a lot has been said already when it comes to the stereotypes, tropes and patterns uh, of transgender representation. And a couple of months ago, the documentary Disclosure by Sam Feeder came out on Netflix. The film gives a good insight about the history of trans representation, voiced by various well-known actors and filmmakers from the industry. Do you know that feeling when you're sitting in a movie theater and everyone's laughing at something and you just don't get it? I think for a very long time, the ways in which trans people have been represented on screen have suggested that we're not real, have suggested that we're mentally ill, that we don't exist. And yet, here I am, yet here we are, and we've always been here. What I want to explore in these videos, however, is the other side of the coin. I want to find and discuss films that are authentic and valuable to the trans community. Real stories about characters with depth. However, the question that remains is, how can we tell whether a film is good, bad, authentic, fake? One that belongs in the archives of trans cinema or should go to the discarded pile of shitty representation? The short answer is you can't, the same way you can't objectively say whether any film is good or bad. It depends on who you ask. It's therefore important to say here that any film that I discuss or praise here might be a film that you don't like, which is completely valid. And I would love for this space to be a place where we can have these discussions. In this episode, I wanted to start with one of my favorite films, namely Paris is Burning. Paris is Burning is a feature length documentary made by Jenny Livingston. It showcases the world of ballroom in Harlem, New York during the 80s. Men gather together under one roof and decide to have a competition amongst themselves. Balls. It is a beautiful, vibrant and eclectic film that alternates stationary interview shots with significant individuals from that scene with messy camera work on the walkway and on the streets. When I watched it for the first time a few years ago, it was also the first time I learned about ballroom culture and it absolutely blew my mind. The sense of community, the notion of found family, the dancing, the outfits, the energy, it related to me on a very personal level. I think I was especially touched by this theme of belonging that is weaved throughout the entire film like a red thread. The idea that a group of people who have been pushed to the margins of society can come together and create something so vivacious and full of love is incredibly powerful. A ball is the very word. Whatever you want to be, you be. So at a ball, you have a chance to display your arrogance, your seductiveness, your beauty, your wit, your charm, your knowledge. You can become anything and do anything right here, right now, and won't be questioned. I came, I saw, I conquered. That's the ball. Give her what she wants. She bring it to you every ball. Why are y'all gagging so? The film was met with both a load of criticism and praise alike. It very much brought 
the culture of voguing and ballroom to the spotlight. This, ladies and gentlemen, is voguing, a form of dance. It inspired Madonna's Vogue and won prizes at major film festivals like Sundance. At the same time, Livingston, who is a white middle-class lesbian, was criticized for playing the role of a year and appropriating culture, making money off the backs of trans and queer people of color, and were barely distributing the wealth and attention that her film gained. I felt that she took advantage of all of us, all of us, you know? But I didn't benefit nothing out of it. I think Paris is Burning is a good example of a pattern of gentrification uh, that comes up a lot when we talk about representation of trans and queer people of color. This is white America. And when it comes to the minorities, especially black, we as a people for the past 400 years is the greatest example of behavior modification in the history of civilization. We have had everything taken away from us, and yet we have all learned how to survive. That is why in the ballroom circuit, it is so obvious that if you have captured the great white way of living or looking or dressing or speaking, you is a marvel. Well, I do think that the film uh, does a good job at revealing the tough realities of being a queer person of color, which is still very much the same case today. I do think that its overtly white audience is placed in a very similar role that of the foyer, seeking to consume and reappropriate a form of subculture without really looking into and addressing the, the circumstances and realities under which that subculture was born into. Nevertheless, I do think that Paris is Burning is an historically essential document that has had and still has a huge influence on the global queer community. It is a record of important figures, phrases and practices that are the fundamentals of ballroom culture. And for that alone, I think Paris is Burning is a must watch. And you can actually watch the whole film on YouTube and I've provided the link below in the description. As far as my naming my house, the house of Ninja. Ninjas hit hard, they hit fast. An invisible assassin and that's what we are. We come out to assassinate. This was the first episode of Trend Cinema 101. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the film Paris is Burning and what film or series I should talk about in the upcoming episodes.